Throughout the history of humanity, every culture has made use of psychoactive substances, but arguably no civilization was better at it than the Mayans. The clever Mesoamericans were early settlers of the North American continent, and they knew a thing or two about getting stoned that is now lost to the sands of time. Welcome to Nutty History, and today, let's find out how Mayans raved during ancient times. There are at least 54 hallucinogenic mushrooms in the genus Psilocybe that are found in the southernmost region of North America, especially in Mexico. Mayans used them all to get stoned. They didn't just get stoned from shrooms, they made stones out of shrooms. Confusing? Well, it's kind of simple, actually. Dating back some 2,200 years, nine beautifully sculptured miniature mushroom stones were found at Kaminahuyu, a late pre-classic and early classic archaeological site near Guatemala City in the 20th century. The archaeologists have theorized that these mushroom idols were almost certainly connected with the nine lords of Zabalba, as described in the Popol Vuh, the sacred book of the Quiche Maya. These Mayan relics, of which hundreds have been found, some dating as far back as 1000 BC, were initially considered to be phallic representations, though the current consensus is that the mushroom stones reflect a Mayan religious mushroom cult. Yeah, you heard that right, a mushroom stone cult to get stoned by mushrooms. Mayans certainly use kaiselage ococks in their ceremonies for its hallucinogenic properties. The presence of psilocybin produced mind-altering effects which allowed them to have visions and feel the fluttering of the heart, which was interpreted as connecting with their mighty gods. Religious practices involving the use of sacred mushrooms took place in the Valley of Mexico and the rest of Central America. Researchers estimate that these rituals are at least 3,500 years old. Mayans called magic mushrooms flesh of the gods. They believed that the shrooms were the gift of the serpent god who created all life, bestowed upon them. Apart from psilocybe mushrooms, Mayans were also fond of Amanita muscaria, also known as the fly agaric and fly Amanita. Mayans also considered the urine of reindeer holy just because reindeer commonly consume fly Amanita, and they loved to drink it for its psychoactive properties. Apart from mushrooms, peyote, morning glory seeds, and salvia divinorum were also important means to achieve another level of consciousness during sacred rituals. Peyote cactus, for those who do not know, contains 60 hallucinogenic compounds, with mescaline as the primary intoxicating substance. Mayans like to perhaps chew nodules of peyote cacti, or maybe they mixed it in with their drinks. Interestingly, the use of peyote in Mesoamerican culture predates Mayan, with evidence being found in its use in rituals as old as 5,000 years ago. According to a study, traces of peyote being used as a drug has been found in a lot of places in Mexico, and the Shumla Cave in Texas. Now, experts say that ingestion of peyote causes colorful visual hallucinations and kaleidoscope visions, the sensation of weightlessness, and altered perception of time and space. Like psilocybin mushrooms, peyote too disrupts the interaction of neurons and neurotransmitter serotonin. Beware that peyote can cause increased body temperature and heart rate, uncoordinated movements, and profound sweating and flushing. Mayans are known today for their industrious nature and innovative inventions. They were gifted architects, artisans, engineers, and scientists with doctrines principally based on science and cosmology. They also used their creativity and ingenuity to find components to get high where nobody else would look. Can you imagine getting high on the skin of a dead animal? Mayans could. One of the most unusual drugs in Mesoamerica was sourced from the toads in the Bufo genus. The salivary glands of the toad species in this genus produce toxic substances called bufotoxins, which also have psychoactive properties. According to 16th century historians who were able to interact with the last Mayans, they wrote that the Mayans added tobacco and the dried skins of a common toad in the bufo genus to their alcoholic beverages to make the drinks more potent. Toads of the bufo genus secrete a milky, toxic substance to dissuade predators called bufotoxin. And as one knows, healers of every ancient and medieval culture believed that every poison in a controlled dosage was a cure. But for Mayans, it was psychedelic. According to some sources, the Kitsch group of the Mayans still used the skin of this amphibian as an ingredient in their bouch. Now, speaking of bouch... Mayans love communicating with spirits. 
Speaking with the dead was a huge part of their fascination with the afterlife. I mean, who can blame them? They were advanced for their time, but still nowhere close to how far humanity had arrived, so they had to find their answers somewhere. Communicating with spirits helped Mayans to predict the future and comprehend events that were difficult for them to grasp. Such events included illnesses, changes in fortune, bad weather, astronomical events, calamities, poor harvests, and wars. To establish communication with their dead ancestors, they would hold a ritual of divination, and drinking bouts was an important part of initiating the ritual. This intoxicating drink was concocted by mixing an infusion from the bark of a plant called Longocarpus longistilis together with honey produced by stingless bees. Also, not just any stingless bees would do. They had to be the bees that fed on the nectar of stabentin, or a specific type of morning glory plant that contained urgent, which is thought to have psychedelic properties. Now, you may think this is a coincidence, but no. Mayans were well aware of what they were doing, as they were getting high on stabentin seeds and nectar as well. The scientific name, Turbina Carambosa, stabentin was widely common among Mayans at least in the 16th century, according to ethno-historical accounts. Shamans were consuming it for performing soothsaying, and according to Spanish physicians Fernando Hernandez and Juan de Cardenas, when consumed orally, the seeds were powerful enough to make one lose their wits. They were pretty much accurate with their observation because the Benton seeds contained the ergo alkaloids ergin, isoergin, shonoclavine, elimoclavine, and lysergal. Together, they can create a similar effect to tripping acid. Now imagine the same hallucinogenic substance but fermented into an alcoholic drink. <laughs> yep, that's a double whammy. That is exactly what Bouch was supposed to be. Anybody would see their great great grandparents come back to life after drinking that. According to Mayan records, drinking this beverage helped them to make sense of what spirits were trying to tell them. Apart from Bouch, Chi was quite a popular drink as well, made from the sap of maguey. Pineapples, corn, guanabana or soursop, and other fruits containing high levels of sugar were also fermented into alcoholic beverages. Drinking Bouch and other liquor beverages was also often accompanied by smoking tobacco. But Mayans also consumed alcohol in a slightly different manner than how people do nowadays. Human anatomy is a marvel of its own. Every part of it, every system, seems so intricate and meticulously placed that it is hard to think of a better design. For example, look at our digestive system. It has a perfect entry and exit process for food and waste, respectively. But sometimes the human body exit needs to be used for injecting cleansing products for sanitary purposes in the process called an enema. But an enema is not a process somewhat would relate to getting high, right? Well, not with that attitude. You just need to think like Mayans. Ritual enemas were part of Mayan life, using substances containing alcohol, often mixed with mushrooms, peyote, and other psychoactive substances. The enemas were applied using long neck syringes made of gourd and clay with a hole cut in the tip of the neck, as well as a larger hole on the side which was used to fill it with liquid. They were performed to help people attain more intense trance states more quickly. The reason why someone might want to administer consuming psychoactive substances through their rear end is that the hiney has two properties that make them excellent drug delivery systems. They are moist and they have an excellent blood supply. That means the drug will be absorbed into the bloodstream and reach the brain very quickly, often more quickly than drinking the concoction. The water lily is pictured so often in Mayan art that it is clearly one of the top two or three most frequently rendered flowers during the classic Mayan period. Many scholars compare Nymphia ampla or white lily for holding the same place in Mayan civilization as Nymphia cerulea or blue lotus enjoyed in Egyptian civilization. Mayans called water lily Nictija or vulva of the water as for them it represented the source of life, birth and fertility. Just like an opiate, the water lily is known to have sedative and trance inducing effects and must have been used as a painkiller for reproduction and arousal. Other hallucinogens used by Mayans included, but were not limited to, wormwood, Tagetus lucida, Datura stramonium, and Datura candida, also known as devil's trumpet. Most of them were used to dull the senses or kill the pain, which also made them effective for making the person to be sacrificed docile and compliant. So, what do you think? Did Mayans know better than the current generation about how to party? Or do they make a good cautionary tale for why one should not do drugs? 
Tell us in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching Nutty History.